Hey, what's up guys? So we're gonna start uh, shooting a few videos for you that is gonna delve a little bit more into the science side of things. Um, a really great uh, journal that just came out called the Mass Journal, um, and it's really digging into kind of the relevant science that's out there on hypertrophy, um, you know, aesthetic-based stuff, and you know, more bodybuilding, but strength, strength performance as well. And it's not putting out the, the studies, uh, but it's dissecting some of these studies, so uh, it's a little easier to digest uh, in more of a call like layman's terms, but it does break down the science of it. So what I'm gonna do is just pick some of the um, more interesting articles that, that are out there that you know I go digging th through the internet for. Um, they did a great job of compiling this stuff. It's a monthly journal. I recommend checking it out um, if you want, or you can just tune in here, and I'll break down break it down even further to make it hopefully a little even a little more understandable than what they present, which is pretty pretty good. Uh, so this week, um, I want to get into a pretty awesome study that essentially um, analyzed a few different things. It analyzed um, it took on questions of you know, how much does muscular damage matter? Um, or how much is it, you know, is it a factor in causing hypertrophy? So really damaging the muscle. I think kind of old school bodybuilding, um, people call it bro science. Um, the theory was just annihilate the muscle, annihilate the muscle. And you know, when, you're, when it's recovered, you go back and do it again. And that was like the recipe for success. So this study, um, you know, although not perfect, is pretty good. Uh, it, it's kind of saying that that's not the case. That one, the study is saying that the, the damage uh, caused to the muscle is not really eliciting, eliciting a hypertrophic response. In other words, not the reason that the muscle is growing. And as a matter of fact, too much damage can interfere with muscle growth. Um, so let's, I'm gonna um, just reference the study as we're going through here, and let's take a look at the kind of the first, like the, the, the key points of the study essentially. Um, that, that, that's the idea, is the gist of it. Uh, but anyway, it's, we're looking at two things, and it's the muscle damage and um, pr uh, protein, uh, muscle protein synthesis. In other words, how much protein uh, the muscle is requiring to, to grow, and that's what happens when you damage the muscle. Um, it, it, at least was, that's what we thought happened, and it, and it is true. It's what happens uh, according to this study as well. Um, when you damage the muscle, it does increase uh, muscle protein th synthesis. But, um, well, let's just not say, but we always thought that muscle protein synthesis and hypertrophy were right there together. So in other words, they were, they were almost causal. Um, in, in relationship and, and uh, or you know at least had that correlation but but almost causal in, in, in the relationship but what this study is showing that you know um, the the muscle protein synthesis is indeed higher highest after like a, um, the most uh, damage that you cause to the muscles so after a really hard workout with high volume what you might not be accustomed to but um, the the, the protein, the increased muscle protein synthesis, the demand for that muscle to synthesize protein or use protein um, is not necessarily causing hypertrophy or causing the muscle to get bigger. As a matter of fact, um, it's kind of putting the brakes on that um, of, of, of the hypertrophy and it's just focusing on in, uh, repairing the damage, which isn't, isn't actually growing the muscle. So that's, that's one takeaway from this that when the muscle damage is high, um, and muscle damage is gonna be high when you have a higher than normal volume, like if you're a lot higher than normal, you're doing unfamiliar movements, so movements that you never did before. If you're accustomed to a light press, maybe you start back squatting or something. Um, so when these things happen, damage is gonna be higher and muscle protein synthesis will be higher, but that doesn't mean that the hyper, hyper, hypertrophic response is going to be higher according to this study, which again is a really good study. Uh, it was a 10-week study, um, and a lot of variables were controlled for. It wasn't perfect, no study is perfect, but it's, it's, from what I've read, one of the better ones out there. Um, okay, so 
the, the second key point is the conclusions about muscle growth potential of nutrition and of training protocols. Um, it can't be based on a muscle protein synthesis data uh, when substantial muscle damage is present. So in other words, it's hard to even get a handle on that when muscle, muscle protein, um, when, when the damage is so high to determine whether that, that MPS, we'll call it muscle protein synthesis, because I'm having trouble saying it anyway. Um, MPS is high. Um, we need that to calm down a little bit before we can even test for it. So um, MPS over multiple weeks of, of training after the repeated bout effect has dampened muscle damage is highly predicted of hypertrophy. I'm just reading the exact key points out of here. All that means is that after it's slowed down, after that, that MPS is slowed down, in other words, we don't have such a high demand for it anymore, um, then after that is, is when we had the repeated bouts or we're doing the same movement over and over again, that's when hypertrophy is, is really jacked up. So actually reducing the, amount of, um, reducing the amount of damage that we're doing to the muscle is, um, is actually gonna promote more hypertrophy and more muscle growth than if we were to completely annihilate that muscle group every time. So it, uh, a more controlled increase in volume and intensity is the way to go. Um, compared to um, this, this insane overload all the time and just completely annihilating muscle groups. So the next thing I think about is, well, we already touched on it, that mu muscle damage um, is not directly correlated with hypertrophy in this study. So same deal is that the, the, the crazy overload and, and um, destroying the muscle where you're incapacitated for a week afterwards is really not conducive to hypertrophy as we thought it was. Um, you know, coming from an old school bodybuilding approach where you want to be walking out of the gym completely trashed um, is not the best approach. And, and this, is, this is what's awesome about all these studies that are coming out now is we can actually see the science behind this stuff. It's not anecdotal anymore. Um, it's not just, you know, finding the biggest, strongest dude in the gym and asking him what he does, um, but being able to figure out and decipher stuff along the way. So those are key points. Um, I don't want to make this a half an hour video. We'll see how long it actually winds up being. Um, but let's, I do want to go to kind of now the takeaways from the, from the article, from the study. So I'm just going to the bottom here and, and go right through the takeaways. So what it's looking like is that, according to this uh, short-term study that examined this, is that um, using these unfamiliar, untrained individuals um, after like a detraining period, in other words, if you haven't worked out in a while or you're doing unfamiliar movements. Like I said, um, you usually do leg press, now you can do back squats or something like that. Um, it, it, may, it may not be predictive of long-term hypertrophy, again, due to the elevations in MPS. Um, the, the, the MPS is driven by uh, muscle damage more than hypertrophy. So it's not the demand of the muscle to grow now that is, um, that's not what the MPS is telling us now. It's not the demand of the muscle to grow, but actually to prepare that muscle. So just because damage is high, doesn't mean it's a good thing, right? We don't have to annihilate that muscle. Um, so this is now an interesting takeaway of this, is the hypertroph hypertrophic potential of a, of a study protocol can only be accurately assessed after the damage has subsided due to the repeated bowel effect. Again, when we get the real uh, meat and potatoes out of the study was not after that first workout in week one, but it was actually after week three and week 10. Now we can see this repeated bout effect, meaning that we're continually doing that movement over and over again with a slight increase in intensity and volume, not significant increase. And we're seeing a more hypertrophic response out of that than we are completely annihilating the muscle. Um, and I guess we'll just go right into uh, the, the final takeaway from this article. Uh, it's all the same stuff, but to avoid a detrimental effect of excessive muscle damage, the the, the idea is to gradually acclimate yourself to a higher level of volume and intensity um, as needed to progress, so in an incremental fashion. So this is why whenever I put together a hypertrophy-based um, plan, the volume uh, increase and the progression on it is very, very slight compared to, you know, like, I would never make a, a huge jump week to week. You just need to take the amount of, um, the, the amount of, increase in volume increase volume intensity and frequency that you need to progress uh, not as much as your body can handle and that's always a balance it's a delicate balance but you're always it, it looks like it, even according to this study 
that you're better off being on the low side of volume and intensity than you are completely overdoing it. Um, and that's not just um, because you know worried about long-term health or your joints or anything like that, but it's actually going to be more conducive to you reaching your hypertrophy goals. Uh, taking that that very slight and gradual approach, give your body a chance to acclimate to the newer movements that you're doing, um, and this is actually a more beneficial approach. So. Those, those are the big takeaways from this. Um, review a few more of these, these journal articles as we move along.